All right guys, just wanna give you a bit of an update video. I'm still working on getting the shop set up, but I'm actually starting to make some knives and obviously I don't have my, my little bracket that I had welded to the wall for my portable bandsaw, so I'm back to using the bench vise. I'm not sure, I'm kind of tempted to look into like a swag table or something like that. Uh, one of those tables that mount these two. If not, I'll have to build something else to mount it out here. But uh, I started to use this thing and I was wondering what had happened was my blade was running cockeyed and it turns out one of my bottom bearings was shot. Uh, Luckily enough though, I found a place in the city in Calgary that had some and it was like four bucks for some new bearings. So I whipped into town, quickly grabbed those and I'll show you real quickly how you change those out. It's really, really quite simple. All right, so what I've done actually, I've already moved the shroud that goes over here and uh, it goes over the bottom wheel here. And those are just these, what are they, T20 uh, Torx drivers. You'll need those if you ever have to do this yourself. Um, I'll take this blade out of here. Uh, at first I thought maybe like the blade was all wonky or something like that, but nope, it was bad bearings. So all we really have to do to swap these out, um, this here is a T25, I do believe, yes. Uh, so the, the, the two screws that hold this little assembly here are T25s, and I'm just gonna take the whole thing off just for ease of uh, being able to get in there and make sure it's all clean and I don't have any little filings or anything in there. So we're gonna pop these suckers out. I'll come over to this side. And what these two screws will basically do, they'll remove this little, this is your lower bearing assembly. You've got this one here, the backing bearing, and then these two here that are the guide bearings. And this one actually doesn't feel that great either, but uh, this one, as you can see, completely fell apart. It went kaput. So I'm gonna undo these screws, put new bearings on, and then we should be back in business. All right, so we'll do a little close up here. Obviously you can see the inner race of the bearing there and then uh, the outer parts, the guts of it just fell off. I, I, I don't know when it happened. Actually, the ring was still on there. I don't know if I have it still. The ring itself was still there and I actually pulled it off. I tried just moving it to the inside. Uh, basically it was the inside bearing that had failed and so I just took it apart and I put one on the inside because that's where it does a little bit more of the straightening out to see if that would uh, help me out, but it didn't. It, it literally just cuts curves right now with this with this sucker down and out. So it's kind of a problem. So just take this off. This is a little bag of goodies I got and for the price for $4.25, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Uh, they originally quoted me just uh, $4.25 for one bearing and I asked them, I said, how many do you have? So I wouldn't mind having a couple spares. So he brought this whole little kit for me and said, ah, just use this. So uh, this one here is a smaller bearing and that is the basically the support bearing. I'm sure some of these washers here are for that. And then this is actually the pin goes through there, I'm assuming, yep, looks like it. Actually, what I should do is write the bearing number down. That way I can just order the bearings from somewhere. So if I write that bearing number down, I'll be able to just order new bearings. I'm sure I can get them uh, readily available. I, you know, I, I imagine it's probably a good idea. Like when I feel these, they don't feel that great. There's a little, they're not smooth. So I'm sure it's just a matter of time before those ones fail as well. But, um, hmm. I'm just gonna double check. I haven't taken this side off yet and I just wanna make sure there wasn't a spacer or something there that I'm missing out on. Keep this stuff separate so we don't confuse them. So obviously we've got this washer on the outside here. Nope, so it basically looks like this shoulder right here goes right against the inner bearing race. And then that's how you get this little guy out. Let me see what this guy feels like. Yeah, it feels pretty good. And then this one as well has these little spacer washers which I'm about to lose. Don't want to do that. Okay. Ba boom. So put this sucker back together. I'm gonna actually give this a little quick clean. May as well get any debris out of there if we can. We've got the technology. So clean that up. We'll clean right here, just wipe them down. Good enough for me. Okay. And then if you, these were ever loose, you do have access to these without taking the whole bandsaw apart. Um, obviously we've got a locating pin right here and I'll show you a close up of where that goes on the other side, but let's get this other part reassembled. Okay, and this was the used bolt. And this was the used washer. So I've got, basically I've got two extra bearings and then one extra backer bearing 
with the pin. So that's gonna be nice, nice little, it's something you don't always think about, you know, when you buy these tools, um, essentially, I mean, I'm not surprised these fail because you think about what they do, um, it's, uh, it's not a consumable necessarily, but it's a wearable part, right? Bearings don't last forever, especially in this application. Um, so it's kind of nice to have these spares. So I'm gonna keep this little bag of goodies together. Um, something I never thought of, but I'm probably gonna order up some extra bearings just so that I always have them, because it's a good idea. You never know when, like literally, I had just started cutting up some, some knife blanks, and um, I don't know when that bearing had cracked, but as soon as I started cutting this morning, I was like, it's all cutting crooked and cattywampus. I was like, what goes on? And uh, it kind of really sucks when you're right in the middle of getting started, getting knife orders out and customers are waiting and definitely a good idea to keep spare parts like this on hand. So I'm gonna put this away for safekeeping and we will go ahead and get this reinstalled. All right, give this a quick little clean. And uh, so we talked about that little detent uh, that goes into that hole right there. Just kind of helps locate everything. And we put in our little screws to hold it all back together. I also have some spare screws that came with that kit, so that's kind of nice too. Uh, these ones you can actually use a slot screwdriver on. They've got the Torx on there, but then they also do have a little cut in there for a slot, so that's kind of handy. And what I'll do is I'll use the slot to put it in, and then I'll torque it down with the uh, T25 socket that I have. Not that it really matters. I don't think it has to be that tight, but I don't want to overdo it because I think it's probably like a magnesium body or something. You don't want to strip those out. So while I've got this bottom shroud off, I'm also going to just kind of wipe this down. You see, when you're cutting a lot of steel, you get a lot of these little, little bits of metal. They kind of get impregnated into the rubber wheel there. I'm going to scratch them off with my nail. Because we'll give it a little cleanup while we can. It's a lot more difficult when the bottom shroud is on to do this. So let's take advantage right now. Um, so, you know, I, I do want to say, guys, I, I apologize for the lack of videos lately. I really do appreciate your continued support. Um, it's just with the schedule that we have right now with the stuff with the house, with getting orders out. And I will say this, that this is a season. Um, I believe it's a season. Uh, hopefully it'll be over within a month that I've just been so busy with all kinds of stuff. Hopefully, once we're back into the house, there'll be a lot less off my plate and I can focus more on knives and then free up a little more time to do some more knife making videos. Uh, also, I've had a lot of requests for viewers knives videos. Uh, the biggest reason I haven't done any of those is because with it being cold, 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 I usually do the voiceover for those in my shipping container, but it's just too cold to do it lately. So the nice thing about having this garage set up is that it should allow me to get back into uh, doing viewers' knives videos. So those will be coming as well. And uh, again, I, I do apologize. I, I really feel bad that I'm not making so many videos, but um, they will be coming back. That's a good thing. All right, so now we're ready to put this bottom shroud on. It took a little bit of finagling, if I remember. I'm going to crank it up in here and then bend it over this way. It doesn't just slide right on and off, but you don't have to get too crazy either. Let me see if I can do it from this side so you can see what's going on. So yeah, all we're doing is going to put these screws back in here. And these are T20 Torx screws. And these ones do not have a slot in them, so basically need a Torx to put this back on. This has been a good tool, I'll tell you what. I'm super, super impressed with this thing. All the abuse that I give it. One thing when you're bolting up shrouding like this, applies to so many different things, automotive, anything that's assembled and held together with more than one fastener. You do yourself a favor to get everything started before you torque any single one fastener down. Having said that, I do believe, yeah, I cranked this sucker, so. What am I talking about? But it just helps if you can get all the, all the fasteners in first. And uh, sometimes if you just take the first one and tighten it up too much, it makes it really difficult to finagle things into place. So, so I'm always keep in mind. Now we can tighten them up. We'll throw a blade on here and hopefully it works. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I can see right now this is a lot straighter than it was. So I think, uh, I think that's gonna do it. I think that's gonna let us make some straight cuts again. Uh, where's my little table? Put this little table back on here. It's not on all the way. Let's go. Oh, there we go. Now we're set. Actually, I want to tighten that up one. Or do it. Yeah, I do. Beauty. Kind of get a better bite in the vise. I really do miss my little wall stand that I had. I miss it a lot. Okay, so now we are ready to cut out some knife blanks and get rocking and rolling. Right, guys so once again just want to say thank you so much for your support and I do apologize for the lack of videos lately there will be coming more videos soon as well viewer knives I just want to kind of get back in the routine I feel like I'm disconnected from you guys and I, it really bugs me I don't like it but my goodness like I've been I've been starting uh, work at about six o'clock every morning like out here at six and I've been working till like eight or nine at night just trying to get stuff done there's some stuff I'm doing inside the house some stuff I'm doing here getting knife orders done so it's just been fantastically busy but like I say this should just be first season and once that's done uh, once this whole move and everything is out of the way we'll get back to having a little bit more free time for videos so that's the case I, I've not stopped making videos it's not like I don't want to make videos but I legitimately just don't have time right now but it will change so hang in there and again thank you so much for your continued support I really do appreciate it also thank you so much for the great ideas on uh, acoustics in here ways to improve that you know with bed foam on the ceiling I'm not sure if I'm gonna go quite that extreme but we'll see I'm not entirely sure but then also things like uh, possibly building a grinding room and those are all ideas that I am thinking about uh, but the one thing I've done is I've actually cleaned my toolbox here and uh, wiped it all windexed it all down with my nice stainless steel top so I'm gonna work today grinding knives doing my regular thing with the dust collection set up the way that I hope to have it finally running and once that's done I'll show you guys that but I'm gonna see how much dust accumulates on my toolbox right here and that should give me a good indication of how feasible it even is to work in here without like contaminating the house too much so that's the plan anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to the channel you can do that by clicking this link right here and then there's a couple other videos or playlists on this side that you might enjoy thanks for watching guys cheers